and I commend those of my colleagues tonight that are here as well, talking about the existential threat of a nuclear Iran. Madam Speaker, I rise today to express my deepest concern over the growing threat of a nuclear Iran and the, the, the threat it poses to the rest of the world. Satellite images show that Iran's nuclear weapons can reach the eastern seaboard of the United States. If Iran, the world's largest state sponsor of terrorism, achieves nuclear weapons capability, the effects would be catastrophic. While it's certain that a rogue Iran would target Israel as a one-bomb country, it's also certain that the U.S. is their target and final target. News from last week's nuclear negotiations with Iran is troubling. Iran will be allowed the right to enrich, retain thousands of centrifuges, which they don't deserve, and build a plutonium reactor which they should never have practical need of. Yet during these talks, they continue to obstruct inspectors who reported last week about the possible existence in Iran of undisclosed development of a nuclear payload for a missile. And what's more disturbing is that in the midst of a hurting economy and harsh sanctions, Iran still managed to find a way to build, develop, and test their nuclear weapons capability. Can you imagine the possibility of their capability if the current administration were to even lift those sanctions? One thing is very clear. We've made too many compromises since trying to broker a deal with Iran, and there have been too little consequences for their unwillingness to cooperate. Past administrations were adamant that our position was zero enrichment and zero centrifuges. Under President Obama, this has been abandoned as being unrealistic. Negotiations began with an offer to end Iranian enrichment. Now today, the deal is a temporary arrangement that allows a strong, internationally authorized nuclear program. If we lift sanctions and legitimize their nuclear developments, we are sending a signal to the rest of the world that a rogue state can disobey all rules, maintain their supply of illegal enrichment, and still get international leaders to approve an enrichment program. A nuclear-armed Iran would dramatically change the balance of power in the Middle East and threaten freedom and peace for the rest of the world. They would clearly spark a nuclear arms race in the Middle East and destabilize the entire region. Other nations like Egypt, Turkey, and others will have no choice but to develop their own nuclear programs to protect their countries from the threat of Iran. Not to mention that Iran will likely share their nuclear technology and know-how with extremist groups hostile to not only the United States, but also to our allies in the West. If there is to be any hope of reaching a peaceful deal, and if Iran wants prosperity, and success for its own people. It must stop its pursuit of a nuclear weapon, sponsorship of terrorism, and human rights abuses. If they truly want to move forward, they must give inspectors unfettered access to covert facilities. Iran has to cooperate and stop obstructing inspectors. Preventing Iran from acquiring the nuclear weapons capability is the surest way to, present, to prevent war and preserve peace. As this unrest continues, the United States must maintain our rich partnership with our allies, including Israel, who is our closest ally in the Middle East. And I welcome Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to the People's House tomorrow. Thank you, and I yield back the balance of my time.